Hello hackers, welcome to, welcome back to the automated vulnerability discovery module of Pwn College. Today we'll be talking about the Cyber Grand Challenge, something quite fun um, that I'm excited to share with you. The Cyber Grand Challenge was an event created by DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, in 2000. Well, it was created, uh, it ran over a number of years. The final event was held in 2016. What is the CyberGAN Challenge? Well, the CyberGAN Challenge was a realization of a dream. And this dream um, was to take hackers like people that compete in DEF CON CTF and to learn their minds and synthesize them into machines. Why did we want to do this? Well, the, the insight is this. Um, hackers are rare. The hacker mindset needs to be developed carefully over a long time, carefully grown like a flower, a unique and rare flower. But if you create a machine that is as unique and rare as a flower, whereas a flower takes a long time to grow, a person takes a long time to grow and develop, the machine can be duplicated trivially. Software can be copied and more instances run. And eventually you could have a world where machines help us close that gap of vulnerabilities that we aren't finding that are out there waiting to be exploited. The CyberGround Challenge um, was created by DARPA to be fully autom automatic. Uh, teams first had to qualify. Seven teams managed to make it, including our team, uh, Shellfish. Um, this was during my graduate studies at UC Santa Barbara. Um, there was actually in the final event, this is a picture from the stage before the final event started. Um, this over here uh, is a government certified air gap. Um, the only communication in and out of this air gap were burned DVDs that were dropped outside of the air gap with the current scores. The uh, goal of this, of course, was non-interference to make sure that everything in here was truly, truly automated and measure the automated state of the art. The uh, event itself took place in front of a gigantic crowd. Um, this was maybe 10 rows back, but this was an enormous room um, over here. On the side are, are the, the parents, so so to say, speak, of the cyber reasoning system. That's where we were sitting, um, watching our creation battle. There was a live uh, commentary um, provided by uh, a group of people, including the um, person that led the organizing team of DEF CON, three teams before mine, um, which was super uh, cool to see. Uh, it was quite an event. You can find YouTube uh, videos of this event, a lot of summaries of this event um, on the internet. Um, but the point is, in this event, a lot of the research based around a lot of the concepts that I've been talking about in this module found a home in our um, cyber reasoning system. Um, it was a crazy journey, right? This was, uh, you know, a, a, not just watching the cyber reasoning system battle, but uh, just being part of this this insane event. Um, this is uh, a picture of my team celebrating uh, some maybe we moved up in the ranks or, or something like that. Um, but the preparations for this were absolutely insane. Um, DARPA ran a, a series of practice events called sparring sessions in which you could um, make sure that your cyber reasoning system could at least speak the right protocol and, 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 and do something. Um, cyber reasoning systems, by the way, were the, uh, was the term for these autonomous hacking systems that, that fought this cyber war, the, this competition against um, each other. Um, the, uh, one of the sparring sessions, one of the very final sparring sessions that were absolutely critical that we wouldn't miss, when it came online, our database crashed in our cyber reasoning system. And so we had to 
create a paper database. This is one of my uh, teammates literally writing data into a paper database and then manually querying API endpoints to trigger resulting actions so that we wouldn't uh, waste the sparring session and wouldn't miss the, the, the knowledge that we could derive off of that. We tried to do um, proper uh, programming practices. Um, we tried to do a code freeze, uh, for example. And then shortly after the code freeze, uh, we had all of this insanity, including a, a commit message. God, please forgive me for this commit. Um, up to right before the actual final event, we uh, um, were, were making critical last minute changes to our system from our hotel in Las Vegas. This event took place on stage at DEF CON CTF in Las Vegas. Let me show you this full um, time lapse video. I think it's, it's, oops, it's worth watching. This is right up to almost the moment that the organizers literally cut with scissors the uh, network cable of all the cyber reasoning systems. And this is us doing crazy things. I'm in the yellow shirt there. Just finishing up. Literally worked all night. And uh, that is our preparation for the Cyber Grand Challenge. Um, so what happened? We fought the Cyber War. The Cyber Grand Challenge was designed after CTF competitions, which you have now played, hopefully, that you have now experienced or knowledge of. Um, and like any uh, competition, there are scores, there are winners, and there are losers. And we got kind of uh, toward the top of the pack. First place won $2 million. Second place won $1 million. Third place, this is where we placed, won $750,000, making uh, my CTF team uh, at the time Shellfish the richest team in the world um, uh, because the the... the Two entities that beat us were, were companies, um, not ragtag groups of crazy students. Um, there are a couple of interesting uh, pieces of um, uh, interesting takeaways from these results. One, um, if you look at these red lines, this is the attack score of the cyber reasoning system. That is uh, uh, represents you know how much your cyber reasoning system attacked. Our system exploited 15 of the, uh, my mind is well, like, I think 86 challenges in the final event. Imagine 86 hacking challenges. You know how hard they can be now from uh, going through all of these levels of Pwn College. Uh, 86 levels to do in a nine hour event is, is not a lot. Uh, uh, not a lot of time. It's a lot of challenges. Our system managed to solve 15 this is because in part, part of the system crashed part way through because our automation was not so um, um, super resilient as we expected. Actually, multiple of these systems crashed, not due to program analysis problems, but just due to the complexity of creating robust software that'll run for nine hours straight. Blue line is defense. Um, we were only exploited on a total of 12 um challenges on on uh this was an attack defense uh game that that our cyber reasoning system played so it had to also defend against other hackers 
Um, we defended all but 12 of our challenges. Um, the way that we defended these challenges, unfortunately, brought down our yellow line, which was our um, uh, performance metric w too much and dropped us into third. Um, but we are the only cyber reasoning system in history to achieve a palindrome score in the final event of the CyberGAN Challenge, or probably anywhere. Um, the CyberGAN Challenge was incredible. It was incredible because it brought together uh, a lot of the research areas that we were working on, gave us a one solid, amazing event to test ourselves. Um, it was an incredible experience and super, super great to have in my graduate career, um, but it's only the beginning. The CyberGAN Challenge had a simplified operating system with seven system calls. If you recall the environment modeling problem I discussed in the symbolic execution lecture, the CyberGAN Challenge sidestepped it by having a very simple environment. It also sidestepped a lot of other complexity because this environment didn't have threading, networking, persistence, a file system. All you had was the binary and that's all you had to analyze. Um, it didn't have many different security mitigations that we've discussed throughout this course, meaning that the exploitation, the automatic generation of exploits that the cyber reasoning systems um, had to do was much simpler. Likewise, the automatic repair of the software to fix the vulnerabilities that the cyber reasoning systems uh, found was didn't have to um, stand up to scrutiny against expert humans. It just had to stand up to scrutiny against systems designed to exploit fairly simple vulnerabilities. So there's a lot of work to do, especially on the actual artificial intelligence and planning um, aspect. Quite a lot of work to do. Uh, we at ASU are doing a lot of this work. If you're interested in doing research, um, in participating in events such as the Cyber Grand Challenge, um, whenever uh, they have it again, shoot me a line. If you've made it this through to this far through Pwn College, you might have a research future. Good luck.